<clears throat> okay, well, good morning. Thank you for joining me again on this beautiful Saturday morning. I know there wasn't a lot of uh, notice, but I thought we could paint cute fruits. And I think I would start with a pineapple. I've been wanting to, to do a few things like this, and I'm going to use our sample card. So a lot of times people ask me, how many paintings can you do with that? And they don't really understand how concentrated watercolor is. So I'm going to start using just this one card and we'll see how far I, I get with it. And to do a pineapple, we're kind of just going to be doing emoji style versions of these. Just cute things that you can use as a sign off on a note to a friend or a gift card or a tag. And you could do this with uh, any kind of yellow. We could do it with primary colors too, and you would mix your own green. But for this one, we're just going to start with a big circle, kind of like a long grape. And again, you don't have to be really fussy about if it if the edge is smooth or not, just make a puddle and then you start pushing it around and you pull it and push it until it's got your perfect pineapple shape. And then we're gonna let that dry a little bit because oops, um, we're gonna do a little cross hatching over it and depending how much water you've put on there, you'll get a, a bit of bleed or, or not, a little feathering. So now I'm going to take some orange. And you could take red or peach or any other slightly darker color, even brown. And then starting from, from the bottom of the pineapple, I'm going to use my brush to just drag across some stripes, kind of like, like that. I had to turn off the, the furnace there. I have a, a kind of a quiet voice and just the fan going on the furnace will drown me out. So we've just done these, these lines this way. And then we're going to pause a minute. And we're going to do the same kind of lines, but just going across in the opposite direction. And that's going to make the diamond shapes of our pineapple. So we've got the body of the pineapple. And now I have a bit of green. And using the tip of the brush, there's a few ways to do this. You can do greenery by filling up your brush and just laying it flat like this. And you can just kind of tap it around until you get where you want. Then you can pull these. Pineapples are always a, a little wild on top. So I'm going to make mine a bit shaggier. And just pull these greens down. There we have a basic pineapple. Nobody's going to say, oh, I see you painted a shoe. <laughs> and if you want to add more details, you could add a bit of uh, a darker green. You can always add detail and interest by very variegating the colors that you're choosing. So if you're doing a green and you want to make it look a little bit more interesting, add a little bit of blue into some different areas. Or if you're doing a yellow, add a little bit of uh, peach. And that little bit of variance in the color is going to make it look, look interesting. So let's try that one more time. We'll do a, a doppelganger pineapple right here. So I'm just going to 
for the beginning, if you're making a shape like this, don't feel psyched out by trying to make a perfect circle. See, you start with any kind of blob, any kind of blob at all. And then from the center of your blob, just start moving your brush. And this is, this is kind of a, a, an easy motion. You're not, you don't have to use your fingers to make this motion. You're moving your whole hand. And that's what really gives you a smooth, a smooth line. There's uh, different ways that you can learn how to move your brush that rely more on moving your whole body. And that gives you an awful lot more control. It's when you try to do it all with your fingertips that you get wobbly lines. Okay, so there is my identical football. And I'm going to use a little bit of orange. <clears throat> Again, let's see how how wet that is. A little bit. It's not so wet that it would drip when I turn the page up. So that's that's how much water is being used there. So here's a little bit of orange. And this time, let's see, when we when we start here, I think the the lines for the pump for the um, pineapple, they're like smile lines. So you know you could curve this way. I think that would make the pineapple look like you were staring up at it from the bottom. It would have a different look. So you want your cross hatching to be kind of the same as a smile. It has that that curve, not an umbrella, but a smile. So we're gonna do these ones on this angle. And then again on the other angle. And this would look just as cute if you had very, uh, if you waited for the first layer to dry and then you did uh, really clean lines, that would look neat. So here's another way to do the green. So before we laid down like this, and this time we're just gonna spring up with our brush and then we're gonna get a bit of dry brush, which looks shaggy and wild. I'll do one more right there. So that's a bit of a difference doing just from the way that you're moving your brush. And I'll do the same thing by giving it a little bit of blue just to make it look interesting. Okay, so that's our pineapples. I'm going to tuck them right underneath there. And now we're going to do grapes. So if you don't have a purple, you can do it with a red and blue. And you can start out with your blues. Oh, I have a purple, but I think I'll do it like this just to show you what it looks like. So doing our grape bunch, we're just going to start out with a few circles. And there's a couple of things you can do. If you want the grapes to look like they have shine to them, then as you're doing this circle, I'll, maybe I'll make it a bit bigger. As you're doing these circles, you'll want to leave a little spot of plain paper right in the middle. Okay, so here's our circles. Same thing, I'm not really feeling uh, stressed about making these perfect circles. And while they're wet, I'm just going to add a little bit of a red or a magenta to make these purple grapes. And this is just a fun way to do it if you want a little variety. I love a mixed purple, it's so beautiful. It can look Mixed colors can end up looking a, a lot more vibrant than direct already, uh, already their colors. So there's my two mixed grape colors. And here is my ready to go grape color. 
You kind of see what I mean there. I almost prefer the the mixed ones. So that's all I'm going to do is just keep doing a lot of uh, sometimes at the edge of a grape bundle you'll have one you have some that you can see that are behind the grape bunch. They're not the out in your face front of the pack grapes. So what we want to do is we paint everything that we see in the front. So that's just adding on any which way. <laughs> I should probably just use my purple here, but this is this is pretty fun. See, even to the regular purple, you can add a little touch of blue just to make that interesting too. Okay, I'm still adding on front facing. This is gonna be my bottom of the bunch grape right here. So he's gonna be quite shiny. And maybe I need one more. This grape here is just kind of, you notice that when I'm doing a background grape, I don't let the color touch the front grapes. And that's kind of a way of just keeping it, keeping it, uh, the shapes clean from blending into each other. It's not a big deal if they do, but it's nice to leave a little bit of white lines there. It just kind of shows, uh, it just kind of shows that it's not one giant lump of one giant mass. So that's, this is tucking a grape, a background grape. We know that it's round, but this is the part that's just hiding behind right there. Let's do another background grape on the right here. This one, this one's gonna be mostly sticking out. It's almost all out. It's just this little bit is kind of hiding behind these other grapes. So you do your best to make them the same size. Oops, I forgot to put a sunlight on that one. That's okay. The background ones don't have as much uh, direct sun on them anyway. Okay, a uh, couple more background grapes. You, you just kind of want to build a V shape here. And you can add as many of these guys as you want, or as many or as few. Um, I might put one more right here. And you really have to watch this. You see our purple is so concentrated, it's practically black. So I'm gonna try to water this down a little bit more. Okay, and one more background bunch there. Anywhere you think you could put a, a couple more. There's my bunch of grapes. Now this part is really fun. I, I've talked a lot in um, other videos about the way that you're holding your brush it can do really changes its capabilities. That's one reason why we only have, uh, oops, that's my speaker. Um, one reason why we only have a number four brush in shop. And it's just all the variety you can get with it. So I'm going to take this green. And with the pineapple, we did leaves like this. And then we did leaves like this. But for grape tendrils, we're going to put our brush directly up on point. So the brush is straight up and down. And then you can warm up a little bit, just moving your hand in tight little circles. And then you turn, you do your circles clockwise. And then you turn around and do your I got 1400, circles. but they're going to take 1100 out oops. on Monday. <laughs> oops, oops, oops. Oops, somebody's joined, but they're not muted. So sorry. Uh, if you could check your, check your mics there. Um, uh oh. Being settings. Hmm. 
Sorry, I th I think I got it, but anyway, just double check for for your mic settings. Okay, so we got our brush right up and down, and I'm just gonna do some background curly cues. So we were practicing, we're putting, doing a clockwise spin, and then we're doing a counterclockwise spin. So I started at the top with my grape bunch, and I'm going spin, 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 spin counterclockwise spin. <laughs> That's like the best part of painting grapes is just doing these curly cues. So you can make them that big. You can make them a little bit smaller. I'm going to do one going this way that's a little smaller. So I'm going this way, then I'm switching, then I'm switching, and I'm just letting myself curly cue all over the place. Oh, I can just do pages of curly cues. So once those are there, we're gonna take our green and make the main the main stem you know, comes up off of here. And then we're gonna do a grape leaf. These are really fun. So we now we're back to doing our brush flat like this. And grape leaves are lobed. They have uh I think it's about five, five points to them. So you can go right over your vine shapes that you've already done. And we're just gonna do a few things like that coming off of coming off of the vine. And because the grapevine, there's all this detail in the curly cues. It's nice to make these leaves look a little more painterly. You know, I always have to remind myself that it's a painting. It doesn't have to be a photograph. And maybe we'll do one more leaf over here. So you can uh, curl your leaves by making your lobe blobby shapes uh imagining there's a spine down the center of the leaf some people it helps them to paint that first okay or a rib so here's our first leaves and now i'm taking a tiny touch of uh, a blue and same thing i'm going to add a little bit of interest to it i'm just taking ever so slightly a little bit and I'm gonna draw straight down the middle of the leaf. And then I'm gonna draw out to the points. This one is the curled leaf here. So I'm drawing out to the points that we made. And that's something, oops, that's a lot of blue. That's something that you can add as many extra as many extra little offshoots as you want. So if you start coming from these, oh, I'm using, uh, this is our spring green, but you could use yellow and almost night is gonna make you about the same green, yellow and great ocean. So this is our version of a thalo blue. If you have any kind of thalo blue, it's the same. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, so make these leaves as interesting as you you like by putting more uh, more little stripes. And this is getting quite confident now with these blue <laughs> these blue uh, lines I'm doing. But you can do the same thing too with the yellow. If you want to uh, add a bit of yellow in there, then that's going to give you like a lighter, springier, springier color in your leaf. Okay. So that's about that for the, the grapevine. So we've done grapes and pineapples. Um, One 
I like to have a little bit of a tissue around where I'm painting. So that was going to be part of a, another fruit. This is a way that you can do um, peaches or apples. I'm going to have to look for that little bit of tissue. Okay, so I just have a bit of this tissue. Everybody knows that kind of recycled tissue is not that absorbent, but the general idea of it is that we're going to, this is the same thing you could do for an apple or a peach. So, I'm just taking water, has a little bit of color in it, you can see there. Having a little color is neat for this because it lets you see where you've put your water. And I want like a lot of water on here. So I'm making it quite wet and I'm pushing all of that water around everywhere. And now I'm going to start putting in red. <laughs> That's so much fun. Even just doing that and leaving it, this color is going to uh, skate around and eventually it'll fill in the whole circle with just a little bit of color. That's a really fun way to do uh, fruits, apples. But I'm going to keep going. I'm going to add a little bit of this pink. Maybe. You can see how the paper, when it starts drying, it's really, uh, well, just the, the way it, it'll move and bloom so beautifully when it's a very, very wet paper. So there I've got magenta. I'm gonna add a bit of orange in here. This is, maybe this is more of a peach now. If you add more yellows, then you get into uh, peach, apricot, hybrid, hybrid fruit. Okay, so there we go. I've mixed all my colors and it's totally fine to leave it exactly that way. Or take a little crumpled up paper and make sure you have it pretty firmly in your hand. And just give a cute little dab. That's going to give you a bit of a, a look of a, the 3D rounded effect. So then after we did that, I don't have a brown on here, but I can make a bit of a brown by starting out with pink. I'm just going to do a little stem. And I'm going to use this blue. And I'm just going to paint right over what I had there. And a bit of green. It's adding this green that really turns things brown. There. Now I've got a, a cute little brown stem that could go off maybe to a, a leaf. We'll just do a curving line and one more right here. And I'm going to leave this little bit in the middle where we didn't touch. And that's going to be the, the center line of the leaf. <laughs> Okay, so there's techniques for three very cute little fruits. And thank you so much for coming out on a very snowy Saturday morning. And I will see you next week. If you have any ideas of what you'd like to see me paint here, then um, just comment them on Instagram or send us an email. Thank you so much for coming out. Happy painting.